this tutorial is going to be writing in automation in logic. Uh, if you haven't seen my automation lecture, I encourage you to do so. And in there, we discuss two styles or two techniques in automation, either penciling in automation or performing the automation, writing it in. So first, we'll go over penciling in the automation. So first in logic to get my automation view, I hit A on my keyboard. And all of a sudden, I'm in this automation view. I'm going to zoom in on this base track. All I do is click on this line, add points, move them. And you can see before I move a point, I select a point before and after because if I just grab a point and move it, it's going to change the volume of my entire track. So now if I play this back, you could watch this fader automatically move up and down with this line. Now let's discuss automation modes, and there's five automation modes we discussed in the lecture, and that can be found in the inspector. If you don't see this view, hit this I up here in the top left-hand corner for inspector. And right above the pan knob, you see this little, this little cell that says read, and it allows us to change it. Turning it off is the off automation mode. It's not reading any automation. Read will actually read that automation. That's what we were in after we pencil in that automation. And that's typically your default in any DAW. Next we have touch. And this is probably the automation mode um, in a lot, when I'm mixing, making a lot of automation moves, either touch or read. So touch will play through your automation points as if you were in read mode until I grab this fader and start moving it around, adjusting the parameter that I'm automating. In which case, it'll write a new automation until I let go of that parameter. Then it will revert back into reading whatever automation was there previously. So I'm going to play it. Now you see when I grab this, It was writing a new automation until I let go, then it latched on to whatever I had previously written. So if I play back, you could see that fader is following whatever I had done in real time. And it will continue to read through until I grab it. and write a new automation. Latch is very similar to touch in the sense that it will read whatever automation was written until you grab it, you could write a new automation. The difference is wherever I let go, it will continue to write in automation data until the playback stops. So you could see I'm playing back, I grab it, I could write a new automation. Now when I let go, Instead of latching back onto whatever automation points I had, it continues to write in new automation data. Uh, the last mode is write, and you have to be careful of write because as soon as you start playback, it starts writing in automation data to wherever that parameter was last set at. That being said, if I stop the track, start it over, without taking it out of write, it will start writing in that new data. So you can see I start playback. It automatically starts writing a new data. And as a default, it reverts back to touch. But you can see if I start playback, it automatically reverts. And wherever I let go, it starts writing in that automation data. You can come over here into the edit window and that'll tell us what we're actually automating. So in this case was volume. And you can see that right here. It also shows us what edit mode we're in. If we want to change the parameter we're adjusting, our main parameters are volume, pan, solo, mute. 
We could also select any parameter on any effects right off the box. So, so let's say we go to the pitch, course tune, and automate any effects as well. So let's go here. So you can automate effects that simply going into Logic. So that's it for this overview of automation and Logic. Stay tuned for more tutorials.